macroeconomic news, barring the latest updates on the coronavirus outbreak, will be relatively thin on the ground in the coming week, although the budget on Wednesday the 11th of March is likely to dominate the headlines here in the UK. Now, how much of an impact this has upon the stock market will partly depend upon what's going on in the rest of the world in terms of the viral outbreak and the government's and central bank's policy response to it, and also partly depend upon the policies outlined by new Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rishi Sunak. The gambling, tobacco, alcoholic and soft drink industries are always on the lookout for any changes in tax, for example, while estate agents and house builders will be looking for commentary on issues such as stamp duty and the help to buy scheme. The government's overall spending plans will come in for scrutiny, although expectations that the Chancellor would go on a spending splurge, well, they've been tempered a bit by the global viral outbreak and the absence of shovel-ready projects here in the UK. Infrastructure spending and public sector wages will both be areas of particular interest, as will any indication that the government may look to tinker with tax relief on pensions or other areas of personal or corporate taxation. In truth, the government doesn't have a whole lot of wiggle room when it comes to spending. Remember that former Chancellor of the Exchequer Philip Hammond's so-called £26 billion fiscal war chest was really additional borrowing that would take the UK back to an annual budget deficit of 2% of GDP. It wasn't actual ready cash. And even that wiggle room, if it was there, could have gone for a burden, at least without taxes going up. In late 2019, the Office for Budget Responsibility released some restatement of the national accounts. And that took into account a different treatment of student loans and public sector pensions, amongst other things. This chart here shows the annual deficit and the upward change implied by the OBR's adjustments. It runs to around 18 to 20 billion pounds a year. Now, in terms of company news, a handful of FTSE 100 firms are due to release interim or full year results, and a lot of mid and small cap companies are due to do the same. Reports which could prove particularly informative include those due from the following. Phoenix Group and shipbroker Clarkson on Monday the 9th of March. Standard Life Aberdeen, fund manager M&G, STV, Ultra Electronics and Wood Group on the 10th. Spirac Sarco Engineering, Dignity, Lucas, Costin and Balfour Beatty on the 11th. Cineworld, Go Ahead, Bodycut and Gallifer Tran on the 12th. And last but not least, support services giant Capita on Friday the 13th of March. Lucky for some. But for me, the stock that's perhaps most capable of causing a fuss in the week ahead is Informa. The media group scheduled to report its full year results on Tuesday the 10th of March. As we can see here, the share's stunning multi-year run that catapulted Informa into the FTSE 100 for the first time back in 2016 began to run out of puff a little bit in the middle of last year. And the shares have since been hit hard, like so many others, by the coronavirus scare. Informa is a specialist publisher, data provider, events and exhibitions firm, and it's got five main operating units. Intelligence, which provides research and data to over 25,000 subscribers via publications and websites such as that of Shipping Bible Lloyd's List. Markets, that runs over 500 exhibitions a year worldwide. Connect, that runs events and provides data and research for specialist areas like biotech, shipping and finance. And Tech, that offers research, data and training to students, readers and subscribers. And finally, scientific and scholarly research publisher Taylor & Francis. Now, the business mix by sales and profit is shown here using the numbers generated in the first half of 2019. As you can see, the biggest operation by sales and adjusted operating profit is markets by some distance, although Taylor & Francis has the highest operating margin at a mighty 37% just out of markets on an adjusted basis. Informa's 10-month trading update late last year was perfectly solid, with underlying sales growth of 2.8%, but one-fifth of sales come in the final two months of any given year, or one-sixth. So when they assess the full-year figures, analysts will look to three headline figures in particular. The first is sales, or more importantly, underlying sales growth. This is because 2019 was the first year when FTSE 250 events business UBM acquired for $4 billion in 2018, made a full year contribution. On a headline basis, analysts are looking for a sales of £2.9 billion against £2.4 billion in 2018, but again, the underlying rate of growth will be key, especially in the context of that 2.8% growth figure after 10 months, as it represented a modest slowdown relative to the previous couple of years. 
Second headline figure to watch is profit, naturally enough. The consensus pre-tax profit forecast is £801 million. That compares to £650 million on an adjusted basis a year ago and the stated figure of £282 million. The bulk of the difference, again, coming from the integration and acquisition and intangible amortisation costs relating to the UBM deal. Third figure is the dividend. Inform has built an excellent long-term track record of dividend growth, even if making exact comparisons is tricky owing to the rights issue of 2016 and the shares issued as part of the payment for UBM. We can see the historic stated progression here, and analysts expect Informa to offer a full year dividend of 23.3 pence a share, up from 21.9p in 2018. That, by the way, equates to a dividend yield of around 3% as I sit here after the recent and sudden share price slide. Analysts and shareholders will also look for an update on the cost-cutting program that was announced when UBM was acquired. Informa is looking to deliver 50 million in annualised cost savings in 2019, rising to 75 million by 2021. The balance sheet will also be an area of focus, as Informa paid out 644 million in cash when it bought UBM and took on 568 million pounds of debt from the target's own balance sheet for good measure. Net debt was 2.8 billion pounds at the first half stage, and Informa's strong cash flow should help it to reduce that. Finally, attention will switch to any guidance for the year ahead, 2020. Inform has said in the past that some two-thirds of its business is predictable and visible. But with several high-profile events such as Barcelona's World Mobile Congress and Milan Fashion Week having been postponed owing to the viral outbreak, investors will be looking to see what Informa can say about its events business in particular, if anything. For the record, the analyst consensus is currently looking for broadly flat sales at £2.9 billion, a small increase in adjusted pre-tax profit to £816 million, and another increase in the dividend to 24 and a half pence a share for 2020. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.